Today, we're going to be creating our own animals, similar to the author and illustrator, Catherine Rayner, today. We're going to be reading the book, Harris Finds His Feet, and then we're going to be making our own um, bunnies in the design and style that she creates. So Catherine is a illustrator, an author, and an artist. She um, allows and really works on having time for both, where she spends maybe a couple months doing a book design and the illustrations for it, and then she goes into making her art for exhibitions and selling prints, usually where if she's not in her studio, she's at the Edinburgh uh, Printmakers. So she is uh, from the United Kingdom. She was born in 1982, and she's won several awards for her illustrations, as you've seen here. So let's dive in and take a little bit more look at her artwork on her website that she has. On her website, you'll notice some of her different screen printing, and she goes into detail about the process, as well as shows a video on it. So mainly she uses this part to create bold, flat backgrounds for her characters to be on. And when you look at these, you can see the different steps she uses, the paints, and the machines. She also does, besides her books and her illustrations, she does original artwork that she sells. So you can see some of her different characters, the colors that she uses, and um, but mainly she does uh, her paintings and her silk uh, screen prints. What she's described as you look at some of her examples is that she mainly likes to draw in pencil and then she dips in pen and ink a little bit. But she says that she loves to experience, um, experiment with marks on paper, ear droppers, and even sticks that she'll dip inside of paint. So she says if she's not in her studio, she's usually at the Edinburgh uh, Printmaking Center. So taking a look at some of her artwork, think about what do you see? What are you drawn to? What colors does she use? How does she bring her characters alive? And all those different things. If we have some time later, we'll come back and we'll take a look at this screen printing video and how um, at the Edinburgh Printmaker Group, you can see how they create one print versus several different prints. And that's exactly what uh, Catherine Rayner uses on her backgrounds. She mainly likes to use this process to create a bold, flat background for her characters to be on. So let's look at her book here, what's inspiring us today. Kath, uh, Harris Finds His Feet, and it is written, the author is Catherine Rayner, and it's also illustrated, so the drawings are done by her as well. Harris was a very small hare with very big feet. Why do I have such enormous feet, Grandpa? Harris sighed. All hares have big feet, young hare, said Grandpa, with a whiskery smile. I'll show you why. Grandpa hopped high into the sky. Harris copied. His small, clumsy bounces grew bigger and better and higher until he could spring like Grandpa into the air. Then Grandpa took Harris up, up, up to the very tops of the mountains. With your strong feet, he said, you can hop to the top of the world and look out to where the birds fly as the wind tickles your whiskers. Grandpa showed Harris all the best things, like how to dig a cool resting place in the earth when the days were hot. They stretched out together through long, lazy afternoons, listening to the insects buzzing and humming around them. Look, Grandpa Harris said, my feet can shade me from the sun. Every day, Harris learned more about his world. When a wolf came near, Grandpa sat still as a stone. The most important thing about your big feet, he whispered, is that they can help you run very fast. So Harris ran, feeling the bounce in his feet and the stretch in his legs. He ran faster and faster, as fast as fast, until he was on his own. 
Grandpa, Harris cried, hopping back. Why aren't you running with me? Because I'm growing old, little Harris. It's your turn to run. The world is yours to explore. And Harris ran, leaping over streams and bouncing through meadows on his big, strong feet that would take him to the end of the world and back home again. The end. So now let's take a look at how Catherine um, Rayner drew her bunny, and we are going to create our own as well. Today we're going to be drawing our bunny, inspired by Catherine Rayner. So when you look at her characters, you'll see that they usually have um, color and lines that are blending and moving because she'll use marks of paint or splashes of paint and you know just a few different things. So what we're going to do is based off of that book which is Harris Finds His Feet as you can see here we are going to play with the different Harris looking. So look at her illustrations as we were doing. They're not perfect marks and that makes them really fun and unique to be able to create. It's like she drops the watercolor on top of it. There's lighter sections and darker sections and Harris has big ears. Um, you even got grandpa here, right? So when we're playing with it, don't worry if your lines are not exact. I think that adds a little bit more fun to it. And we're going to be play, playing with our markers or with watercolor paints, just the black and the brown, um, on here to get the same effect and creation as she uses in her backgrounds and her characters. So let's take a look at it. What I want us to have is this 9 by 12 paper, and then we're going to start off with a black crayon. You can use a brown crayon or black crayon or a pencil, if that's what you have near you. And then we're going to start by drawing our hairs, and we're going to create a cute bunny, similar in style as Katherine Rayner does. So she has several different types of bunnies, but let's take a look at this one. Oops. Broken crayons still work, right? All right, so the first thing I want us to do is we're not gonna start with the head up high because we wanna add these really big ears. So if you wanted, you could have your head lower or in the middle. And what we're gonna start off with is doing a rainbow curve. The next thing I want us to do is we're gonna create a bunny ear, similar to what she uses, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a dot way up at the top of my paper. And I'm going to start off by drawing a curve and then I'm gonna bring it down and connect it to the top of my head. From here, I'm gonna go right in from this inside of it and I'm gonna come up and make it big. If it goes off the paper a little bit, that's fine. And then we want to draw the inside of the ear just a little bit, right? So I'm gonna draw a line like this and make part of that inside of the ear. It's almost like you're repeating it, like a flower almost, right? And what you can do is do a couple lines Get the bunny ear hair in there. There you go. Now we're going to do the same with the second one. You could have it straight up. You could have it angled a little bit. And I think I'm going to make it angled just a little bit. So I'm going to make mine. I'm going to put my dot over here so I know where I'm going. And I'm going to make my big arch and bring it down. And what I like is, is if your ear goes off the page, that's fine doesn't have to be all on there. You know, look at her cover. You can't see the top of Harris's ear, right? But you still know it's a bunny. You don't see the rest of his body here, but you still know it's him. So these are some fun things that we're going to play with today. It does not have to be exact. Lines can be wobbly, but still be fun to look at. All right, so now I'm not going to connect it like I did at this one. I'm going to leave it a little bit of space. I'm going to go nice and skinny at first, and then I'm going to go big and wide. And because I'm not going to see the inside of his ear very much, I'm going to draw a line like this. 
And if you want, you could add in a couple little lines for the hairlines this way too. So here's the start of our Harris's head and his awesome ears. And now we're gonna start making the rest of his beautiful face and then we'll do a little bit of his body. So let's do his head, as you can kind of see, and I'll bring the, the book down here a little bit so we can look at that as well, um, is he's got those lines, right? So we've got our line like this, and we curve, okay? And then you can see on this side right here, it, you know, what I usually do is I use my eye to see what the next curve is. So she's got like a little curve here, and then it curves like this. It's gonna look funny at first, and that's okay. And then he's got like the cute bunny cheekbone, right? So it's gonna come out and curve all the way around. Now she has some other bunnies um, that she makes that have the cute little bunny faces and nose, and we could play with that a little bit too because she makes this style, but she also makes another style. So what I'm gonna do is add that twist, and I'm going to switch up, and I'll pull up a picture of that next one for us. And what we're going to do is create similar to how she created hers, with her cute little nose and the eyes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our eyes on here. I'm gonna do a circle on one side, and same thing on the other. I know they're really wide apart, aren't they? And we'll do the inside of it. If you want, you could color it in. So it looks a little more finished for you. And then we're gonna make our bunny's nose. So we're going to do a big rounded V, right? Cause I did a little curve. And now we're gonna make the cheek, or that first part. So I'm gonna bring it around like this, and like that. And I'll curve it this way a little bit, and bring it in. And in this part, instead of a straight line, I want you to do a little bit of a curve. And now we're going to draw our whisker lines. One, two, one, two, three, right? So here's our head. We've got our ears, we've got our head, our eyes, our nose, and now we're just gonna draw the body, right? So I'm gonna just draw a curve and add in my body. And don't worry if it's a little wavy, that gives a little bit of a character to it. So here is our first step in creating our bunny. Now, for the step of coloring in the background, we're gonna follow similar to what Katherine Rayner uses, is she uses pen and ink, which is like India ink, similar to a pen, but just wetter, and watercolor, as well as a variety of other things. So what you can do is we can use, you know, depending on what you have, if you don't have watercolors that you have near you, what you can also use is your markers and a plastic bag. So what the colors that we're gonna focus on today are going to be brown and black. I know she uses a variety of other colors, but we're gonna focus on making different types of value. So value is when you have something that goes from light to dark. So looking at her character, you know, Harris here, which is what we're focusing on, <clears throat> and even in some of her other uh, drawings of him, you can see areas that are really dark and areas that are really light. So you'll notice like the darker shadows around the edges and the lighter areas. And he's got a little white belly. So we don't have to worry about the belly. Uh, if you wanna leave that area a little bit whiter, you're more than welcome to. But you can notice that when we play with the watercolor today, we can even make, or your markers, similar style, you can make it leak out a little bit and it could be a little messy. And that actually gives it a little bit of character, which is a lot of fun. So that's what we're gonna play with, our using our watercolors. And see, there's just a smidgen of black to add in a little bit darker to our watercolor brown. 
And that's what we're going to play with. So to remind you of how to do this, the word watercolor has water in it, right? So when you're playing with it, think about how you're having, um, and I'm sorry for my cord being in the way, think about where you have everything. So for example, when I put my marker down on my paper, I'm going to use my paintbrush, and this is one of my water brushes. I give it a nice little squeeze, and I make sure it's nice and wet, and now I'm going to get this nice dark brown, right? Let's start with the dark brown by playing with it here. So I'm going to paint, and I used the crayon initially because it keeps it in, just like this. And I could add a little bit more water if I want and make a lighter brown. So to create value using markers is you can make puddles. Now you don't want to go back and forth and really get everything super wet. Um, if you don't have one of these brushes, you could use a regular brush. But what I like to start off with is we're going to make a nice little puddle in our black and browns. So similar to what you have here. And you can also do a fun trick where you get your paper wet without any paint on it. And we're touching the puddles. And look, just by touching, you're painting with water, colored water. So when you paint with watercolor, don't grab and swirl and dig in there. You want to just gently put your brush in and touch it. And look at all of this bright color. Watercolor is fun, where when it dries, you can go back in and add another layer. You can make something darker if you want. So when you're playing with this, I want you to play around and go through and add some areas of dark and light, as you can see. So look at the picture. I'm going to post the picture on here. And that way you can get an idea of exactly what we have. I'm not adding any more water to my watercolor right now. Instead, I'm just painting. I'm going to tap and paint a little bit more. And you'll notice I'm not grabbing a lot. I'm just touching the puddle that I have. And each time I go back, the color is a little bit stronger. If you don't like that, grab a little bit of water and it will move it. It'll pick it up. Then you can always go back in and fix, which is fun. You can grab a little black, and we're going to use the black on the edges. So you don't want to use a lot of black. See, if I use a lot of black like this, it takes over a little too much, doesn't it? If you find that you ever put too much on, you can grab a Kleenex, and you can just dab it off like this. And now it has a nice little shadow. So I can grab a little bit of my brown and put the brown back over it. And voila, now it's a black brown. So play with the colors on here. Fill in your bunny. Don't do the background yet. And I want to see if you can make some really light areas and some really dark areas. Remember, if you need to put water, you can drop some water on your paper, and you could actually paint with just the water, because your brush still has paint on it, right? And that can make a lighter area. If it's too light for you, again, you can dab it, and you can put some other colors on. Even dabbing that, look at that cool texture I came up with. So have your dark areas on the outside, and you have your light areas in the middle. And at the very end, you're just doing a tiny bit of black. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Wherever something touches, that's where I add the black usually. And remember, you can always go back in and dab it off. So take your time play a little bit, and fill in your cute little bunny.
remember you can go back and you can add in once area is dry you can add in a little bit more color I'm not adding any more water until my puddles are gone and that's when I need to add some water into it So I wanted to show you up close if it's easier to see. I have a puddle in here. This is shiny and dry, but watercolor should be just literally touching, barely touching, and that is a ton of brown on here. So I'm just touching it gently to get the color on here. And look how strong this color is, right? You want to see it, some of the white paper showing through a little bit more. And you could go back and touch more and look what happens. You can make these cool little explosions by touching the color on top of wet areas. So I want you to play. If you find that the paint's not moving well, squeeze your brush to get your brush a little bit wet again. And then look, the water will move your paint and it'll make a really cool effect. Okay, so do you see how this area touches another area, right? I'm gonna just do a tiny touch of the black because there's so much black and it takes over. And I'm just gonna do a little bit and I'm gonna put it underneath the chin and the neck. And look, it gives it a shadow. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the side here of my bunny. I'm gonna keep it nice and dark like that. And look, now my bunny looks real, doesn't it? And I'm just going to put a little bit of areas of dark, just a little. You want to see the brown, but we also want to play. You guys are doing a great job. If you want to, too, and you don't like the white in the area here, what you can do is squeeze the water, and you can just gently... Use whatever color you have left on your brush, whether it's black or the brown. Don't even color it all the way. Put it on there and then take your tissue and just dab it off. And now look, I have like a light brown nose. Cute, right? So now finish your ears. have your bunny done what I'm gonna have us do is we're gonna focus on the background and we're gonna make a really cool black background so we need a lot of water right so having our water in our little um, tube here what we're going to do is using our black marker or watercolor I'm gonna squeeze some water on here okay and we're gonna really fill the whole background with black so I'm gonna get it, and sometimes you'll notice with markers that your black might be a blue black. It might be a purple black. And that gives it some character, doesn't it, when you're playing with it? So we're gonna focus on up and down strokes and really getting it 
covering the background where it's black, like dark black or light black, it's up to you. If you see any of these brush strokes, it's because your brush needs to get a little bit more wet. So focus on when you're coloring it, I want you to keep the same direction. So if you're going up and down, stay with the up and down, okay? Don't go over an area too much. If you want it to be darker, you can by just adding more black on your paper. Once it dries, you know, taking that marker and just getting it nice and wet. Remember, you don't want to see the brush strokes and you don't want a bad hair day. By adding the water, by squeezing it, you see how it's a nice hair day on your brush and then it moves your paint. The reason we put the crayon down is it's gonna help you not get it on your bunny. So we're gonna let it dry that nice little bit and stay with that same up and down coloring in our awesome bunnies. So take your time now, go through and really color in that background. And it's great if it has all these different textures. And there you have it. When you're done, let it dry for a little bit and you'll see how it comes together. It's gonna to have some really neat textures um, and the different values that we were practicing today, which is really fun. So you'll return um, your, put your markers away. You'll take the brush, return that. And the plastic baggie, if you have one of mine, you're gonna take a tissue or something. And all I want you to do is wipe it nice and dry you can clean your desk area and take a picture for Seesaw and you will be all done.